Good morning. First of all, I want to thank the organizer for giving me the opportunity to present this story today. This story started on the latest phases of a TCG breast cancer project, and it aimed at exploring and trying to explain the diversity observed in a subset of breast tumors, and I'm talking about luminal tumors, and in particular, luminal A. As most of you know, breast cancer is an incredibly heterogeneous disease. It can be actually thought as a collection of distinct diseases, it's a and these diseases are mostly characterized by the status of hormone receptors ER and PR and growth factor receptor HER2. As you can see from the cartoon here, the largest fraction of breast tumors are positive for the estrogen and progesterone receptor and negative for HER2. And this definition largely identifies what we call luminal breast cancer. Luminal tumors have been further stratified using mRNA signature into luminal A and luminal B with luminal A being less aggressive, generally associated with a better prognosis, and overall the most frequently occurring breast cancer subtype in the population. However, the great diversity and abundance of genomic data that has been recently uh, become available allowed us to do more in-depth specific analysis on this subtype and identifying a diversity, a great diversity yet to be explained. So what we did was integrating multiple data sets from different studies, accounting for roughly 1,500 luminal tumors, 1,000 of which are luminal A. And for this, from this data set, we have different data type, but for almost all of them, we have copy number alteration, semantic mutation, and mRNA expression. So the first thing that we do was we went comparing the well-established mRNA-driven uh, breast cancer subtype against copy number driven cluster identified in different data set, and I'm showing here the Metabric data set and the TCGA one. And what was quite interesting is that while for basal and HER2 enriched breast tumors, there is an almost perfect one-to-one -one correspondence between these clusters. Both luminal A's and luminal B are associated with multiple and distinct copy number cluster, suggesting an intrinsic heterogeneity in terms of copy number alteration. And a similar picture emerged when we went looking at somatic mutation. Indeed, again, HER2 and basal are characterized by the highest number of mutation per sample, on average, indicated here by the blue bars, while luminal B, and especially luminal A, I would say, are characterized by the highest number of genes mutated more frequently than expected by chance, and these are indicated here by the red bars. So this tells us that these subtypes have a great heterogeneity at the molecular level. But this heterogeneity is not only molecular. Indeed, luminal A is quite heterogeneous also in clinics. Indeed, while it, is, it has the highest median overall survival, it also has the most variable one, and you can see here from the box plot. And it has also been shown that the risk of late mortality persists in this group even after 10 years of initial diagnosis. And it is actually greater in these subtypes than in the others in the long term. So given this overall preliminary observation, we decided to focus specifically on this subtype of breast cancer, the luminal A breast cancer, as it looks like the most heterogeneous, both molecularly and clinically. And we wanted to start exploring this diversity to address some fundamental question, like can we link the variability observed in clinical outcome with the underlying molecular diversity. And we started to address this question by looking at copy number alteration. We went back to the TCGA data set and we cluster the luminal A tumors according to the copy number levels across the whole genome for this patient. And as you can see just by eyeballing this heat map, the diversity is pretty striking. We found five major subgroups, some of which are characterized by low level or no copy number alteration while other, as in, like this one in uh, red here, are characterized by an ab abnormally high level of copy number alteration and especially focal deletion and amplification. So we took the centroid of this cluster and we, went, we wanted to see if we could validate these results in additional data set. And first we validate that in the Metabric data set where we found similar clusters in similar proportions and especially in this data set, we had extensive follow-up, so we could do uh, more reliable survival analysis, and we saw that the copy number high or 
highly genomically instabil instable cluster is associated with the worst prognosis. And I'm showing here that kaplan meier for this, specifically for this cluster in the Metabrick data set here. And we went validating this finding on a third data set where we found a similar proportion around 10% of luminal A that have these genomic features and are associated again with the worst prognosis. So we were pretty excited because we started linking this molecular heterogeneity with, the, with uh, clinical uh, variability. However, we asked ourselves if we could pinpoint specific genomic features that are enriched in this subtype. So I went comparing the copy number high luminal A tumors against all the other luminal A's. And what we found is that these tumors are highly enriched for P53 mutation, MIG focal amplification, 20Q gain, 5Q loss, and are depleted for PIK3CA mutation that otherwise characterize most of luminal A tumors. We then look at genes that are differentially expressed between these two subgroups, and we found that copy number high luminal A's overexpress several regulators of mitosis, including uh, both our arachinases A and B, PLK1, CDK1, and several cyclines. And they downregulate genes involved in DNA repair pathway, like P53 binding protein 1, MLH3, and several polymerases. So all these features clearly point to a high proliferation, high genomic instability, and well explain and match the phenotype that we observed in terms of overall survival. At this point, we wanted to see if we could have a similar comprehensive picture for the other luminal A subtype. We went looking first at somatic mutation, and we saw that the most frequently occurring mutation in luminal A tumors, and I'm referring here to PIK3CA and GATA3 in particular, are enriched in tumors that have low level of copy number alteration. And in particular, GATA3 is highly recurrent in tumors that present the 1Q gain, 16Q loss pattern that characterize roughly 30% of luminal A tumors. And this enrichment is even stronger when we look specifically at hotspot mutation in PIK3CA and GATA3. We also saw that there is a strong association between MAFRI-K1 mutation and wide arm event on chromosome 8 and chromosome 16 that characterize the cluster here in the middle that we call the chromosome, associated, chromosome 8 associated clusters. As you may have noticed, several of these genes participate in similar signaling cascade. So the obvious question was which pathway are most deregulated in uh, uh, luminal A tumors and in the luminal A subtypes. We did a pathway analysis using MIMO. MIMO is a method that looks for micro pathways characterized by genomic alteration that occurs in a mutually exclusive way. I indicated here the link. The method is available at our website for download and use. The first set of results of MIMO nicely confirmed what we already observed in the bigger breast cancer data set, which are multiple genomic alteration targeting AKT, MIP kinase, and ras erc signaling. What we didn't find then, and we could find now by focusing specifically on a single subtype, was a set of multiple rare but mutually exclusive alteration affecting components of core depressor complexes and core and smart. You can see here several mutations. These tend to be inactivating mutation and generally correlate with down-regulation of the correspective genes. But why are corepressor complexes relevant or important in ER-positive luminal tumors? Well, in these tumors, proliferation is mostly driven by the estrogen receptor, and ER activity can be blocked uh, therapeutically using an estrogen antagonist called tamoxifen, which recruits corepressor complexes to block ER transcriptional program. However, it has been shown in breast cancer cells that loss of co-depressor complexes may actually turn tamoxifen into a promoter of ER-driven proliferation by recruiting co-activator complexes instead. So in this scenario, what we have now is a set of genomic alteration with the, are the, which are directly linked to loss of co-depressor complexes and may therefore predict lack of response to endocrine therapy. So, in conclusion, we dissected the genomics of luminal A tumors in multiple data sets 
to explain their molecular and clinical heterogeneity. We identified five major subtypes, actually, of luminal heat tumors, which are characterized by distinct copy number alteration and semantic mutation. And in particular, we found an atypical luminal A subtype characterized by high genomic instability, P53 mutation, aurora kinase subregulation, and associated with a poor prognosis. Furthermore, we show you that luminal A hallmark mutation, specifically pic 3 ca and GATA3, are prevalent in tumors characterized by low level of copy number alteration. And we also identified by pathway analysis multiple rare but mutually exclusive alteration associated with loss of corepressor complexes. And these alteration, as I just told you, are important as they may predict lack of response to tamoxifen treatment. And with this, I'd like to conclude and thanks all the people that collaborate, that contributed and are still contributing to this project. And in particular, Chris, Nikki, and Raylene at CBIO, and Chuck and Katie at UNC, and of course, the whole TCGA breast cancer analysis working group for all the analysis to, done during the breast cancer project. Thank you. So we, any questions? I, of course, always have one. Um, I wonder if we could look at those co-repressor complexes in the, uh, the WashU uh, data uh, from their paper where they had endocrine responsiveness. Um, did, we, did we look in there? I, did we see any of those? I didn't look at the response. I looked at the mutations. And uh, yeah, in the, I don't have a slide. Yeah, I know those were rare mutations. In There's the probably a fingerprint, I showed there. only mutation according to the TCGA data set, but we found a uh, mutation in this component uh, for sure, ANCOR1, I think one mutation in ANCOR2, and GPS2 also in their data set. So it's something. We should and look. One thing that I didn't say is, is that this mutation occurred almost exclusively in luminal A tumors, so are highly enriched in this subtype. Uh, this is Angel from Harvard. Uh, do you see any deletions in the ER receptor? Deletion? Yes. A recurrent uh, deletion now. Uh, this uh, subgroup are characterized by wide arm events, so there are like wide deletion typically occurring in 16Q, uh, uh, if I remember correctly, 8P. And but you didn't see any focal deletions in that region? You mean deletions of ER itself? Yeah. Uh, of ER itself? No. Not I don't really. think so. Um, Not on top of my head. I may have to double check it. All right. Thank you, Giovanni. Uh, so uh, our next speaker.